Before we begin, there's a few people that I would like to thank um, and acknowledge uh, this program would not exist this evening if it wasn't for Gloria Ware. Gloria, where are you? Yes, Gloria. And, and uh, Sandy Jordan. Sandy? Yes. And Jeff Bradford, who will be coming out shortly. Uh, I also want to give special thanks to uh, many people, uh, uh, my, my personal staff that they just work I mean, seven days a week, 24 hours a day. It's just amazing. Uh, Chris Rosenberg, he's the manager of Jazz Arts, in addition to being a, a wonderful guitar, guitarist, guitar faculty member. Stephanie Kreese, who's our senior coordinator. Stephanie's here. She does everything. She's like, uh, tells me what to do. Without Stephanie, we can't function. And Andrew Neasley, who's our assistant coordinator. Also, a special thanks to Deborah Kinsler, uh, the Manhattan School Music Design Office and the production and recording staff. All of this cannot happen. Thank you. Okay, without further ado, I would like to introduce Jeff uh, Bradfield, who is going to come out and talk to you a little bit about the second half of music. Thank you. Welcome. I'm very grateful to be here and very flattered that Justin and TK and Randy Weston asked me to say a few words about some music that you won't actually be hearing tonight uh, before you listen to them. I'm here for a couple reasons, um, mostly having to do with my work in, around Melba Liston's music for the last five years or so, uh, which culminated in a release last year of a CD with my group simply entitled Melba, that is a suite in six movements that is dedicated to her and sort of traces her musical journey. So uh, this, this came about, initially I started by doing some research into her music at the Center for Black Music Research in Chicago where all of her scores are archived. And my original goal was to put out a recording maybe of some unrecorded music of Melba's or to rearrange some of her music for my group. But one of the things that I decided upon uh, upon getting into that music a little more is that she had already done a very, very good job of playing and recording her own music, and she certainly didn't need me to do it. So rather than do that, as I got more immersed in her biography and in the details of her life that came clear from looking at her scores, music she had written over the years for everybody from Mary Lou Williams to Marvin Gaye and beyond, what became more clear to me was that her musical journey was really fascinating, really an, it had an interesting narrative arc and demanded some attention of its own. So rather than record some of Melba's music, I wrote this tribute piece. And it begins 
with the first movement, which is simply called Kansas City Child, and uh, um, speaks to her, her early life in Kansas City, and particular into something in an interview that Sally Plaxon played a bit of earlier, where she talks about playing uh, simple old spirituals like Deep River, sitting on the back porch in Kansas City with her grandfather. So that first movement is a spiritual. The second movement continues her musical evolution, continues to follow her musical evolution as she moved to Los Angeles when she was 11 years old, going to middle school with Dexter Gordon, learning from Alma Hightower, legendary teach out, teacher out there, and apprenticing as a composer with Gerald Wilson, one of the greats who we lost recently. Um, that piece, like many of the others in the movement, actually uses a cell of some of Melba's music as its genesis, just a little line that she wrote on an arrangement for Mary Lou Williams, a two-measure figure, that then using some of the same ideas that Melba used, I turned into a much longer piece. Uh, the third and fourth movements are the central part of the suite and are in turn dedicated to the musical figures that I feel in some ways had the greatest impact on her artistry and on her career. The third movement is simply titled Dizzy Gillespie and borrows some of the Afro-Cuban and Latin elements of his work in a, a very long form piece of many, many second sections, excuse me. Uh, the fourth movement is dedicated to the man you're gonna hear in the second set tonight and that's Randy Weston, one of the great jazz pianists, great jazz composers and someone who had been a hero of mine since I worked in a record store in the 1990s in Chicago and you know spirits of our ancestors came in from Verve or whatever label it was on and uh, some kind critic walked in the store and was like you play jazz saxophone right? You should just buy that right now. <laughs> so that was really the first time I heard Melba's music or Randy's. I mean, so anyway the fourth movement is centered around um, is a tribute to Randy Weston, and it borrows a couple of things that I think are characteristic of Randy's music. Use of the tritone interval, for those of you who are keeping score in the musical technical side at home. Um, it's in 3-4 time, or waltz time, and Randy, of course, is very famous for writing pieces in waltz time. His first collaboration with Melba, Little Niles, is entirely music written for children in waltz meter, written as sort of portraits of children that he knew. Um, so it borrows those two things, and it, it borrows also uh, an unusual sort of harmony that comes from Randy's piece, African Cookbook. I know Randy's listening back there, and hopefully I won't get sued for stealing any of this, but uh, what I don't remember who said it, if it was a musician or a, or a writer, but steal from the rich. Melba had so much to offer, there was plenty to take to use in my own music. Um, the fifth movement reflects her later move for seven years, I believe, to Jamaica, as well as her work with Motown, and it's called, it's simply called Kingston, Detroit, or Detroit slash Kingston. And rather than use Melba's music for that, I do use some techniques she used, but uh, the piece is essentially a fragment from No Woman, No Cry, uh, overlaid with a, um, uh, a, bit, a bit of what's going on. Basically a measure from each, one in the bass, one in the top part, and then it just spins out from there. The piece culminates with a Homecoming, which celebrates Melba Liston's return to America and her return to Kansas City for the Women's Jazz Festival in, I believe, 1979. Help me out, Sally. Nod. Is that right? Yeah. Sally Plaxon's in the audience, one of the great historians of women in jazz, so I'm... <laughs> so I'm especially nervous about getting a date or a name wrong. But, but I'm sure she'll let me know later. Um, so anyway, Melba returned from Jamaica to play this festival with, with her ensemble, Melba Liston and Company, I believe. And that piece uh, takes the initial theme of the suite, inverts it, moves it around rhythmically a little bit so that there's some closure in the suite, which is also a technique that Melba liked to use. Much like Billy Strayhorn, she would bookend a piece with a similar introduction and coda, but then perhaps write the coda as a much longer section that continued into something else. Uh, another technique that I borrow on this, it uses a bit of imitation, uh, tossing these kind of bluesy figures back and forth. All stuff that I, I got in what I view 
as sort of a belated arranging class that I took with Melba Liston in the two months that I spent going through her music uh, four or five years ago. So if you would like to hear this music, which you will not hear tonight, there are a few very good ways to do it. One of those ways is you can go into the record store that you all carry on your phone in your pocket, iTunes or Amazon or whatever, and it's available for purchase, of course. It's out on Origin Records. Another great way to hear it um, is to go online to NPR and hear a full-length concert version, not the CD, but a live version, complete with all sorts of wonderful snippets about Melville Liston's life on the jazz set. And I'd like to thank Becca Pulliam for making that happen. She's here as well. So I hope that you will take the time to check it out. And thank you very much for coming tonight and celebrating Melba Liston's legacy with us. And without any further ado, I would like to leave you with the Manhattan School of Music Jazz Orchestra, conducted by Justin DiCiocco, with special guest Randy Weston. Let's say hello to some of our special guests. Neil Clark on percussion. Sandy DiBiriano on bass. Musical director TK Blue on saxophone and flute. And the great NEA jazz master Randy Weston on piano. Thank you very much. It's a very special night because we're celebrating the spirit of a great, great woman, African-American woman, jazz trombone player, arranger, spiritual, generous. And all she wanted to do was write music. That's pretty high spirit. And the music she wrote, whether it was for Duke or for Dizzy or for Gloria Lynn or Dinah Washington or down in Jamaica, she was amazing. But unfortunately, the women arrangers are not heard about. Lil Hardin with Louis Armstrong in the very beginning, she helped Louis get his thing together. Mary Lou Williams doing arrangements for Andy Kirk's band, you see. So we're celebrating this great woman, Melba Liston, tonight. And the first song is called Blues to Africa because we were always in tune with each other. Ancestors, family, pride of black people. We know we're great people. People were saying we're not, but we're